My name is Mike Hughes, minister for the Spring Hill Church of Christ with another video Bible sermon for your edification and to build you up in the most holy faith coming from the Bible, the Word of God, we find as the inspired Word of God, what will lead your life, what you should you lead your life, study, stay in it. If you have your Bible, go and get it. You're going to need an open Bible. How many have your Bibles? I hope you have your Bibles that you study along with us. Be sure to go grab the note card that goes along with this lesson. You'll find a link to it in the video description below with our instructions on how to print your own copy. If you like this sermon, want to see more like it, give us a thumbs up. By all means, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell to get notifications of when new content is added. Be sure to go to our social media links. If you would like to follow us on whatever social media you're on, we have a link on about all of them till they come up with a new one. Then we'll get a link on that one too to reach as many of you with God's word as we can. The links to those accounts are in the video description below. So now... Without further ado, let's jump into the sermon. Welcome to another study from God's Word brought to you by the Spring Hill Church of Christ meeting at 405 Butler Street, Spring Hill, Louisiana. We invite you to get an open Bible and be turning to James chapter 4, verse 1. That's James chapter 4, verse 1. We will be using the English Standard Version every once in a while. You might see some New King James sprinkled in there, but for the most part, the English Standard Version from one of the oldest and older manuscripts and seems to be pretty reliable. So James chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. Where do wars and fightings come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss, that you may spend it on your pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Divisions exist over various things today. There's division among nations and governments. Within nations and governments, there is division. You might talk about divisions within races, nationalities, uh, delineating differing world views, political, uh, Democrat, Republican divisions, Republican within, I mean, divisions within the same party. There are differing standards of morality and there's even differences among religions. And so from a Bible standpoint, you might look at divisions existing between God and Satan. Truth on one side, lying on the other side, right and wrong. There's good and there's bad. There's light and there's darkness. There's love and there's hate. The world attempts to solve the problem by doing away with and rejecting all absolutes. They will tell you there are no absolutes. But, friends, we are on one side or the other. 
We are either with God, like Abel, like Noah, like Joseph, like Elijah, like Jeremiah, like Jesus, like Stephen, like Paul was, or we're on the other side against God. Cain, the antediluvian world, that is, before the flood, Joseph's brothers, Ahab, Jews, and even the world are against God. We're on one side or the other. Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. There is a great power in unity. Division brings weakness. In Genesis chapter 11 and verse 6, the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language, and this is what they began to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Why? Because they were in, a, in unity. They were one. He says, come, let us go down and there confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth and they ceased building the city. In Luke chapter 1 and verse 51, it says he has shown strength with his arm he has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. Matthew chapter 10, verse 34, Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. In chapter 12, in verse 30, he said, He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Go back a few verses to verse 25. Jesus knew their thoughts. He says to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? Now, recall in our reading a few minutes ago, James said, adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? You can't have it both ways. Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. The psalmist in 133 and verse 1 says, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. We need to strive for unity. Ecclesiastes 4 and in verse 12, he says, Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Have you ever noticed a rope that it's made up of many strands that have strength in number? Amos in Amos 3 and verse 3 says, Can two walk together unless they are agreed? That question he asked, they must be agreed. And we notice that when we look at the prayer of Jesus. His prayer was, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who believe in me, that they, watch this, all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that also, they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. I and them, you and me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you love me. 
So that's Jesus' prayer, that we not be divided, that we be one. Then look at the plea of the apostle Paul. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10, he said, I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus, that you all speak the same thing. There did be no divisions among you, that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind, in the same judgment. For it has been declared to me concerning you, brethren, by those of close house, that there are contentions among you. Now I say this to you, each of you says, I'm of Paul, or I'm of Apollos, I'm of Cephas, or I'm of Christ. He asked the question in verse 13, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Paul's plea was that we speak the same thing, there be no divisions among you. Then, look at the attitude. In, a, in Philippians chapter 1, 2 and verse 1, Philippians In Philippians chapter 2 and verse 1, Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by, he says, being like-minded. Lest each esteem others better than himself, let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. James says, the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. And then we see, we need to be united in doctrine, in teaching. Paul said in Ephesians 4, verse 4, there is one body, one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. 1 John 1, 5. This is the message which we have heard from him and declared to you that God is light in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. You hear that? Are you listening? Second John 9. Whoever transgresses does not abide in the doctrine of Christ, does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ hath both the Father and the Son. We are to be united in one body. We see on the day of Pentecost that as many as received the word were baptized and they gladly received the word. There were about 3,000 souls added to them. They continued steadfastly. They were united in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, breaking of bread and prayer, and fear came upon every soul, and many signs and wonders were done through the apostles. Verse 44 says they were all together and had all things in common. They continued daily with one accord. They were united in the temple, breaking bread from house to house. They were praising God, having favor with all the people, and the Lord adding to the church daily those being saved. Paul encourages us to be united in the body. In 1 Corinthians 12, and verse 12, he begins there by talking about many members in the body, but we're all united together and all have a purpose. We're members of the body of Christ and members individually, but we're united 
in our agreement, our aims, and our purposes. So James asks, in James 3 and verse 14 through chapter 4 and verse 4, where do wars come from? Notice his answer in verse 14. Bitter envy and self-seeking, that's in our hearts, within us. It's earthly, sensual, demonic, and that's earthly wisdom. It's from our desires for pleasure that war in our members. And we lust and do not have, we murder, covet, and cannot obtain, he says. That's because of this desire for pleasure and these wars within us. He said, you ask amiss that you may spend it on what? Pleasure. And then there's division because if we want friendship with the world, we're going to be an enemy of God. Then he says, wars and fights, we find the Bible says, come from those who teach a different gospel, a different doctrine. Galatians 6, verse 9 through 10. He points out, though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you than that which is preached, let him be accursed. There were those who were so soon removed from the gospel of Christ to a different gospel. Those who do not abide in the doctrine of Christ, we've already seen that we must abide in the doctrine of Christ to have both the Father and the Son. Those who are immoral, we see that in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 1. The man who had a, a sensuous relationship with his stepmother. Difference in morals. Those who are greedy, Achan in Joshua chapter 7. We find those talked about in Acts chapter 15 and verse 1, Ananias and Sapphira held back part of the proceeds in greed. Those who are unfaithful, we see examples of that in Numbers 14. Sinful attitudes, pride, selfishness, greed, hatred, jealousy. James talks about all that in James chapter 3 and in verse 14. So how do we overcome these wars and fighting that are among us? We do that by submitting to Jesus, and that brings unity. Look at 1 Corinthians Chapter 1 and verse 10, he said, I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the th same things. There be no divisions among you, that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind, the same judgment. And he said, it has been declared to me concerning you, by brethren, by those of close household, that there are contentions among you. Now I say this, that each of you says, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, I am of Cephas, I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Christ? So submit to Jesus brings unity. What caused the division? Disrespect for the authority of Christ we see in verse 10. No divisions among you. Speak the same things. Carnality, following men rather than Christ. Some call that preacher itis. Don't say I'm of Paul or I'm of Apollos or I'm of this man or that man. Be of Christ. We need respect for the authority of Christ. We need to speak where the Bible speaks, as Peter says, and be silent where the Bible is silent. Have the same mind, the same judgment. Follow the same leader. Paul says in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 1, Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, 
each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you not look only to his own interest, but also the interest of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in, watch this, Christ Jesus. So, differing ideas. We see Philippians chapter 2 and verse 1. Have the same love, be of one accord, be of one mind, have the same goals. There were those who had differing priorities, don't have different priorities. Differing affections, differing in thought, be, we need to be like-minded. We need to have the same love, being of one accord and being of one mind, not differing in thought. Pride seeking glory for ourselves, disdain for others, serving oneself. We need to have humility in serving, mutual respect for one another, serve one another, not our own needs. Don't look out only for your interest, but also the interest of others. James 3 and verse 13, he says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic, for where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, <clears throat> good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. <clears throat> So, wisdom from below will cause division, iniquity, impurity, harshness, rudeness, warmongering, being obstinate, causes, brings about division. The divisive world, that's what they're about. We need wisdom from above. We need righteousness and purity. We find that without the wisdom that is from above, we won't have purity. We won't have peace. We won't have gentleness. We won't be willing to yield. We won't be full of mercy, good fruits, or without partiality or without hypocrisy. We must be meek and gentle. We must be peaceable willing to yield. It's not all about us. We find the unforgiving evil fruits, partiality, hypocrisy causes division. We must have mercy and good fruits. Be impartial. Show impartiality. Show sincerity. And then Finishing where we left off in James chapter 4, he says in verse 5, Or do you think that the Spirit says in vain, The Spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he who gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble, therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. There is great power in unity. Division does break weakness, bring weakness. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 1, Therefore, he says, I, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called with all lowliness, gentleness, 
with long suffering, bearing with one another, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. When all men will lay down their creeds, disciplines, manuals, confessions of faith, catechism, think so's, maybes, subjective feelings, and with an, an unprejudiced and receptive heart turn to the word of God, then and only then will unity result. We must be committed to being nothing, calling ourselves nothing, obeying nothing, and saying nothing except that which is authorized by the word of God. Salvation comes about when we do what the Word of God says. When we hear the gospel, because the seed is the Word of God, faith comes by hearing, hearing through the Word of God, because the seed is the Word of God. Then hearing, we must Believe that Jesus is the Christ. Jesus said, unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins because without faith, it's impossible to please him. For whoever draws near to God must believe that he exists, that he's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. In Luke 13, 3 and 5, Jesus said, I tell you, no, unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. He asked the question, are those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think they were worse offenders than all others who lived in Jerusalem? And he repeats his statement, no, I tell you, unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish like they did. The time of this ignorance, Acts 17, 30, God overlooked now commands all men, all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has appointed. And this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead, that man, Jesus Christ. And then Confession is necessary. Jesus said, everyone who confesses me before men, him will I confess before my Father who is in heaven, but whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And then, Baptism is a part of the plan of salvation. Peter told them on the day of Pentecost, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you, for your children, for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord your God calls to himself. Saul of Tarsus was told to arise and be baptized, wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. 1 Peter 3.21, Peter says, Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then that's not all of it. Endure to the end. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest so no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. He said, if indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard and which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven in which I, Paul, became a minister. <laughs> 